Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, just give us one moment while we get our cameras set up here. So hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cooking Connected. My name is Sajwa and I'm here today with Jordan and Julia. Say hi ladies. Hi everyone. <laughs> So Jordan and I are both Cooking Matters program coordinators with the University of Minnesota Extension. And then we've got Julia here, one of our lovely volunteers um, donating her time. So just wanna give a shout out to her for that. Um, so a normal Cooking Matters class is a nutrition-based cooking class that meets once a week for two hours for six weeks. Um, usually these classes feature a nutrition educator and a chef who work together and demonstrate a recipe and then participants get to do the recipe along with the chef. We learn a lot of really awesome nutrition to go along with that recipe and it's really just a fun class. Now, of course, we are doing this virtually, so it's going to be a little different, but our goal is still the same, and that's to go ahead and learn some fun and creative ways to eat healthy and on a budget. Um, so for today's episode, we are going to be doing the Cooking Matters Orange Oatmeal Pancakes. And then we're also going to be trying another recipe, um, the Blueberry Orange Syrup, and that's going to be um, from food.com. And I'll have the links to all the recipes down below in the live chat, as well as in the description of this video. And we just want to do a recipe credit to Cupcake Princess with food.com. Thank you so much for this delicious syrup, syrup recipe. We really appreciate that. Now, like every week, we do have a survey, and we really appreciate all of you who have been able to help us out with survey responses and giving us your feedback. So I'm going to give you the program code for today's survey. The program code for this week's episode of Cooking Connected, the orange oatmeal pancakes, is going to be E09839. And again, that's our program code for this week's episode of Cooking Connected. So again, we just wanna say thank you for all the surveys that we've gotten, and we look forward to seeing your feedback from this video today. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic to Jordan and Julia. Thank you. Thanks, Sajwa. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Cooking Connected. Um, as Sajwa said, we are going to be making Cooking Matters orange oatmeal pancakes today, as well as the blueberry orange syrup. Um, so some really um, awesome new recipes. I love to make breakfast at any point in the day. It is probably my favorite meal, no matter what. So I'll eat breakfast for dinner sometimes. So maybe this will be something that you'd wanna make for dinner as well. So the first thing uh, that we always get started when we're getting started with the recipe is to wash our hands, of course. Um, we're going to wash our hands first before we start cooking uh, 20 seconds, singing the ABCs or happy birthday twice. And then we're gonna go ahead and get everything ready. So, and I forgot to ask you, Julia, do you, uh, have you made this recipe before? I have not, but it's definitely gonna be on my list because like you, I would eat breakfast any time of the day. So, so definitely one that I would wanna try. Yeah, something new for all of us, awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and change my view so you guys can see what I'm doing again. All right, so as always, I've got all of my stuff set out here. Um, I've, as we learned in previous videos, this is called mise en place. Um, it's basically setting everything in its place. Uh, we like to joke at Cooking Matters having our mess in place. So we've got all of the things that we need for our recipes out and ready to go. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the blueberry, blueberry orange syrup. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started with that. We are using a frozen blueberry today, and I've already got that in this pan. We do need those blueberries thawed. Um, so if you haven't taken them out of the freezer, you can just quickly thaw them um, with hot water. So our first step is in a small bowl, we're gonna stir together orange juice and cornstarch and then set that aside. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I love these little pans or these bowls that have a lid so you can just throw the lid right on top when you're done. So let's see here. We're going to need a fourth a cup of orange juice today. And this is really nice to be making um, kind of an alternative to just regular maple syrup. Um, ooh, I don't want to use that. Excuse me. Uh, maple syrup does tend to have a lot of sugar in it. Um, so we are using, uh, you know, 
an alternative today with the blueberry, which still does have a lot of natural sugars in it, but it's kind of nice because the, that natural sugar is still there. So, all right, if I can get that closed. So we're just gonna add a fourth a cup of orange juice and then a cornstarch. So this cornstarch is gonna kind of bring everything together and just kind of thicken everything. We're using a tablespoon of cornstarch today. Do you ever make your own syrup, Julia? I have, and my favorite thing to do is actually with fruit, like you're doing it here. Um, and when we get a break, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, natural sugar versus refined sugar. So I'll, I'll be throwing out some insight when we get to that point. Nice, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and stir this together and set it to the side. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use my fork and just stir everything together. And usually I'll use um, cornstarch just kind of as a thickener. A lot of times for like um, my stir fry sauces, I use cornstarch sometimes to thicken those up as well. So this is just to thicken things together. So now in a small saucepan, this one's kind of large, but that's what I have on hand. So that's what we're gonna use. <laughs> I've got my thawed blueberries in there. Um, I, the package was 12 ounces, so I do have a couple on the side to just throw on top. So we're gonna use 10 ounces of thawed blueberries, and then we are going to add sugar in. Just one tablespoon of sugar is what we're gonna add today. So let's go ahead and add that in there. Got all of my, just kind of sweeten things up a little bit. And then we're gonna go ahead and combine that. And then we're gonna add our orange juice mixture. Hey ladies, I've got a quick question here. Um, do you have any suggestions for other fruits we could use with this syrup recipe? I know right now it's specific to blueberries and oranges, but anything else that might work well? Do you have any suggestions, Julia? I would do raspberries. That That's actually my favorite thing to do. I love raspberries. And again, it works really well when they're frozen. Yeah. I've also seen um, strawberry syrups before. Um, I really love the idea of using a frozen berry, especially since we're here in Minnesota. Um, we don't have access to beautiful fresh berries all the time. But when we do, we can make some syrup out of that. So, all right. So we've got our orange mixture in there. We're going to bring this to a boil. And Julia just told me that that's really important because we need to activate that starch. Added. So we're going to bring this to a boil and it's important to keep an eye on this. Um, we're going to bring it to a boil and then we're going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. So as soon as that starts boiling, we'll reduce the heat and let it simmer for 10 minutes and then our syrup is ready. So it's as simple as that. Um, and you know, we kind of have a little bit of a healthier alternative to syrup. So and the, another thing you can do is actually go ahead and use um, I like to add peanut butter sometimes to the top of my pancakes. So instead of a syrup, you can use like peanut butter. I've seen people use um, like a flavored yogurt as well. So a couple, yeah, a couple different options that you can use or just plain fruit is awesome as well. So let's go ahead and get started with our orange pancake recipe. Uh, so we have in a large bowl, we're gonna combine our flours, oats and baking powder and salt. So we're mixing all of our dry ingredients first. So we have a half a cup of all-purpose flour we're gonna use and a half a cup of whole wheat flour. So here's my all-purpose flour I'm just gonna throw in here. And we are using whole wheat today as well as an oat. So we have a lot of whole grains in here, which is really nice. Um, you know, we've learned in past videos that whole grains are really nice because you know they've got all that fiber and all this nice things that we need, so. So I'm going to go ahead and the way I learned when you are scooping up flour, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to spoon the flour into your measuring cup. If you just actually scoop your flour, you can get a lot more flour in there. Julia was just discussing this with nope. me. <laughs> so yeah, almost double the, the amount of flour by, you know, it kind of compresses it all together when you do the scoop. Yeah, instead of just spooning it in and then you use a flat, um, just something flat to kind of take that top off. And so now we have our whole wheat flour. So that's going to be really important, especially when you're baking. Um, baking kind of requires a little bit more precision. 
So we're going to go ahead and you know, be a little precise today. So I just want to point out, look at the color difference between the whole wheat and the all-purpose flour. We're really seeing that whole grain that's all ground up in there. Um, and we, you know, we've talked about this in the past with all that fiber and vitamins that are in there. So if we can add whole wheat flour, great. Um, if you don't have it on hand, you could probably substitute with your all-purpose, but we love our um, whole wheat flour here. Next, we're gonna add a half a cup of oats to this. So I'm just using a quick oats today. And I'm just gonna add some oats in there, making sure we're keeping our um, syrup in mind. Don't forget about that. The last thing we wanna do is burn our syrup. That would not be fun to clean up either. <laughs> so next we're gonna go ahead and add baking powder. So baking powder and baking soda are different. Um, baking soda is just what's called sodium bicarbonate and then baking powder actually has an acid that's already added to it. So um, if you don't have baking powder, which is what this recipe requires, you can actually add an acid to your recipe. Um, they suggest like cream of tartar, you can also use like I've seen vinegar in some recipes that's probably not great in this recipe but we actually do have an acid in here with our orange juice so you may be able to get away with using baking soda instead of baking powder so we're going to add a tablespoon of baking powder next and I believe we are boiling so just going to quickly stir our syrup I really don't want to burn this syrup because it sounds so good today. And this pan gets really hot. So I'm going to turn it down now and we're just going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes. And I bet if it does end up getting too thick, you could probably add a splash of water, a little bit more orange juice. I feel like that would, that would do well to thin it out a little bit if it goes over. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a great point. Thanks, Julia. I can always add peanut butter, I guess. <laughs> Definitely. All right, so we've got our heat turned down now and that's just gonna simmer for about 10 minutes. Um, so we went ahead and added our baking powder. Next, we're just gonna add a little bit of salt. Um, let's see, here we're a fourth a teaspoon of salt is all we're gonna use today. Adding just a teeny bit of salt. And, and we're going to stir that up really quick. I already used all my ingredients here. There we go. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, if we have someone who is, you know, gluten-free or maybe watching that gluten intake, would it be okay to substitute a gluten-free flour alternative with this recipe? And have you done that before? So I have done some gluten-free baking in the past. Um, you can probably use a, a, like an all-purpose, they have those um, all-purpose gluten-free flours that you can buy at the store. You could substitute that with this. Um, if you're using a different type of flour that's gluten-free, some of them just keep in mind that you might need to um, think about, you know, some flours spread out more. So your pancakes might be a little watery um, and some pan um, flours will just kind of clump together. Um, so I would probably use that one-to-one -one all purpose gluten-free flour if you are gluten-free um, in this recipe. So next we're gonna go ahead and mix all of our wet ingredients together. So in another bowl, we're gonna go ahead and crack our egg. Get rid of that really quick. And then we're going to just beat that like lightly with our fork here. I love about pancakes, you know, just it's kind of a quick dinner. So if you need a quick dinner, this is a good one for you. Definitely. Especially if you put that peanut butter on top and get some protein in. There you go. Good point. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to add three fourths a cup of orange juice. So it's really important when you're looking at different juices to find something that's 100% juice is what we're looking for. Um, so make sure you find something that is 100% juice when you're looking at your orange juices. So we're going to add, let's say, see, that three-fourths a cup of orange juice and then a half a cup of nonfat milk. 
And our milk here. My goodness, got a lot going on today. <laughs> All right, half a cup. There we go. All right, and last, we're gonna go ahead and add an, an oil. Um, I'm using a, an olive oil today, but you can also use a canola oil as well. Um, we're gonna be adding two tablespoons of oil to this. Let's just go ahead and stir that together. All right, so we've got our wet ingredients, we've got our dry ingredients. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start to heat up our pan. So um, you can use a large skillet on your stove top. If you have one of those, um, you know, other skillets that sits on your tabletop, you can definitely use that as well. I don't like to use mine because I feel like it's a kind of a pain to clean up, so. All right, we're gonna go ahead and coat our skillet. We're gonna just turn on the heat here. There we go. Just kind of a medium heat. Now you can use a um, cooking spray. I don't really like to use a cooking spray. Um, I prefer to use a like a liquid oil. So I'm just going to go ahead and coat my pan and then I'll just spread that out. Now in my household when I make pancakes, I like to do what's called a tester pancake. I don't know if anybody else does it. <laughs> yeah. So I do a tester pancake and that's just the first pancake. It usually doesn't turn out very nice. So that's just kind of my, my practice pancake. So we've got our pan oiled really nicely. There's a lot of extra oil. Sometimes you can just grab it, uh, a paper towel and just wipe it down. I like to do that sometimes. Um, so now you're going to add your wet ingredients um, to your dry ingredients and stir just until the dry ingredients are moistened. It's important to not over mix. So we're just going to go ahead and add that in there. Get everything all stirred up. So while you're doing that, I am going to sneak in for a second. Um, I told you I was going to talk about refined sugar versus natural sugar. So. Let's get a little bit of that. Just um, jump in, Jordan, when you when you go on to the next step here. Sounds good. Um, so what we're talking about with refined sugar versus natural sugar is, it's, it's pretty easy to tell the difference. So refined sugar is going to be something that's pretty much just sugar. So like corn syrup is pretty much just sugar. Table sugar or white granulated sugar, brown sugar, stuff like that, those are all refined. And Pretty much with those, all you're getting is sugar, which is, you know, tastes great, but it's also maybe not the best because when they've done the refining process, they're kind of taking everything out except the sugar. Um, and so essentially it's just calories at that point. So you don't have any other nutrients, um, nothing else like that. So that's what we like to call empty calories. So that's just getting calories with no other benefits. Um, and that's kind of what we want to avoid. It makes it really easy to get too many calories in a day when you have a lot of those empty calories going on. Um, so the great thing about natural sugar, that's the stuff that's naturally found in fruit or there's sugar in milk even, that's the lactose. Um, so when you have natural sugar in whole foods, it kind of balances that because you get the sugar so you have that sweetness, and but you also get a bunch of nutrients. Um, it can slow down the absorption of the sugar into your system, which will prevent blood sugar spikes. So that's especially important if you are diabetic or if you're struggling to to control your blood sugar like that, um, it can be really, really a good thing to use those natural sugars from whole foods instead of like a refined sugar. Absolutely, thanks, Julia. Yep, I just went ahead and added a pancake here. Your pancake, yep. Good. Uh, 
So I'll just show you guys what it's looking like. I'm sure a lot of you have already done pancakes. Um, I'll just wait until all of these bubbles have popped and that's when I know that it's time to flip my pancake. Um, so when I'm making pancakes for my family, what I actually like to do is I'll turn on my oven at the lowest possible setting it can possibly go um, just to kind of keep all those pancakes heated up. There's nothing worse than cold pancakes. Um, so I'll just put the, the tester pancake on the bottom as kind of uh, the one that holds the place. <laughs> and so if it sticks, we're, it's not a big deal. Um, and then I'll stack the other pancakes on top and then I'll just throw them in the oven. It's usually like, I think the lowest it'll go is like 165 or something like that. Um, so I'll just throw those on a cookie sheet and throw them in the oven and keep them warm. So if you're making pancakes for a lot of people, uh, that's something nice to do, keep them nice and warm. I'll just go ahead and flip this. And this is what our pancake, this one actually didn't turn out too bad. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just let this side cook and I'll just keep making pancakes. So whenever you can go ahead with your nutrition education. Perfect. All right. So um, kind of on the same vein that I was going with before. So that refined sugar versus natural sugar. So obviously when we're doing the syrup today, the natural sugar is coming from blueberries. And so you do get the calories from the sweetness, from the sugar in the blueberries, but it's also got a whole lot of other good stuff. So just as an example, we'll take our blueberries. There's fiber in blueberries, and that's again gonna help slow down the absorption of that sugar into your bloodstream. There's tons of vitamin C, vitamin K, manganese, potassium, and a lot of antioxidants. So all of those things are really important to our bodily function. So everything, everything there is something that's really helpful. And you might have heard talk recently about superfoods. And blueberries are actually a superfood. That's not a weird one. You know, nobody, nobody really knows what acai berries are. Um, it's kind of hard to get a hold of those, but super easy to get your hands on some blueberries. So um, that is a superfood. And partially the reason that they're labeled a superfood is because of all the antioxidants that are in blueberries. And what antioxidants do is to remove free radicals in our body. And these are buzzwords that we hear a lot, you know, antioxidants and free radicals are floating around everywhere. So I know that a lot of people have heard of them, but it's hard to know exactly what they are. So let's see. Sorry, it looked like I was having trouble with my internet for a second. Looks like I'm back. Um, anyway, so what free radicals are is unstable molecules or atoms that are in our bodies and they can do damage to our cells. And we get these free radicals in our bodies by being exposed to radiation. And that can be everything from radiation from the sun or flying in an airplane is a a source of radiation, um, getting an x-ray, stuff like that, all contributes to getting free radicals into your body. Um, you can get a lot of them from cigarette smoke and alcohol. And it's even, if you never do any of that, um, free radicals can also just be a natural byproduct of our body processes. So you are gonna have free radicals pretty much no matter what you do. And they are known to advanced aging. Um, so that's definitely something that is going to happen, but maybe we'd like to slow down a little bit if we could. Um, and it can even do things as bad as cause some cancers because it's damaging those cells so much. So the antioxidants that we're getting in blueberries and a lot of other foods kind of attack those free radicals and break them down so that it's not something that we have to worry about anymore. And the benefit is that blueberries are delicious and wonderful and fantastic. So, you know, that's a super good way to, to get that in. Absolutely. Yes. So speaking of blueberries, here is our syrup. It's already kind of reduced. Um, I'm just going ahead and I'm smushing some of my blueberries down, um, just creating a little bit more juice. But you can already see it's looking like a beautiful syrup that we'll add to our topping. So this is actually ready to go. I just like to note how quick and easy that is. Um, I, this is actually my first time making this syrup, and I think I'm definitely going to do this more often because this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So this is my final pancake here. And again, um, usually those bubbles form on the top of your pancakes. As soon as those start to pop, that's usually when I try to flip it. This one got a little bit darker, but that's okay. 
Um, still looks good to me. Still looks good, yeah. <laughs> we love pancakes in my household, um, so we make pancakes almost every weekend. Uh, so this is kind of a household favorite of mine. So they're so quick and so easy. Um, as Julia said, you can add some peanut butter for a little bit of protein. Um, I like to add actually eggs. I'll eat eggs with my, and we'll just have a nice little meal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some syrup on top and we are ready to go. Now we are still consuming a, a little bit of sugar, so don't go too crazy with your syrup. I do want it to fall off the sides though. I'm only human. Right. <laughs> Wow, just, those pancakes look amazing, Jordan. They look awesome. I'm really excited to eat some pancakes for dinner tonight. So simple as that. Um, we've got our orange oatmeal pancakes and then the beautiful syrup as well. So you're going to add a little bit of topping to this um, or some fruit or something like that. And you're ready to go for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for doing that cooking demonstration and thank you Julia for the nutrition education that went along with that. Um, we've definitely learned so much and gosh those pancakes look picture perfect so wow you're lucky to be eating those Jordan. Um, everyone thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Cooking Connected. Really quickly I just want to plug our survey again. Again that's going to be linked in the description box of this video and I will post that in the live chat as well for you. Our survey code for this week's episode of Cooking Connected is E zero nine eight three two nine. And again, thank you to everyone who's been doing those surveys for us. Thank you for the feedback. It really helps us continue to do this work and improve every time. And with that, that's our episode of Cooking Connected. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.